Well, you've been with me so far as we've talked about the first two aspects of being a Building Lives Church or to love God and grow. But now we're going to talk about loving others, how God really wants us to lean in to ministry. It says this in Ephesians 4, that pastors are to equip the saints for effective service. Then when you serve, you'll grow into full maturity. So serving God by serving others is a huge component of a life living all for Jesus. Have you found a ministry? Now, here's one of the things we've done as pastors. We've said we want you to attend the events we host and serve in the ministries we think that matter. So in the church, historically, it's like ministries like, could you preach? Can you teach? Can you sing? Can you watch kids? Can you cut the grass? Can you open the doors? Can you run lights and cameras and all those kind of things? And uh, those things are important, but there's more to this aspect about serving God than just kind of facilitating some kind of ministries within the church. In fact, I heard a pastor say this, you need a ministry in the church and a mission in the world. Well, I want to say this, you need a ministry that honors God, whether it's in the church or outside the church, because God has shaped your heart to minister. Now, we're going to talk about shape, and I use that word intentionally because it's an acrostic for how God has shaped you to serve him. Now, you'll also find along with this this podcast we're doing, this video we're doing, is a workbook or a guide that helps you kind of determine the shape categories that I'm going to cover here in this short video. So you can kind of dive into this thing and say, okay, this is how God has shaped me. So let's use the acrostic and let's talk about how God has shaped me. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, for we are God's workmanship, created by him to do the good works that he's prepared for us from long ago. So with Ephesians 4 in mind, to equip the saints to, for effective service so you'll grow to maturity, that word equip means to mend our return to usefulness. It's what pastor's job is to do. And then to God's workmanship, to do the good works. Let's take that together and look at your shape. So the S in our acrostic stands for your spiritual gift. Now, during the 90s, 80s and 90s, that was a big buzzword, spiritual gifts. I heard it all about it. You know, you got to have a spiritual gift assessment. You got to figure out what your spiritual gifts are. And, and that's true. God gives divine enablements. And you'll find in the worksheet that we provided for you, the, the, the tag along with this video, a, a gift assessment and an explanation of the gifts that are listed in Scripture. And there's about 22 gifts lifted in, listed in Scripture. But I'll tell you something, there's a lot more than that. Because God is not limited by that list. God gives divine enablement to us. And sometimes he doesn't give it to us until we start the task of what he's asked us to do. God's interested in our obedience and our response to him. And then he will gift us to do that before we even, uh, even realize it's from him. But spiritual gifts are a big deal. That means at the moment you trust Jesus, he gives you the full authority of heaven and the empowerment to do what he is asking you to do, to follow the assignments he's asking you to follow. Now, I've been a pastor a long, long time. I, I started off in ministry as an associate pastor doing music and doing students and doing education work and driving a bus and cleaning out bathrooms and all those kind of things. But I never preached a sermon until I was offered this position to be pastor of a church in South Texas, here in Victoria, and I preached my first sermon and found that I had a divine enablement for that. I could be an orator, I could speak, I could teach God's word with clarity and with passion. And then so, but I developed that gift because God gave it to me. And the longer we did it, the more it developed and God honored it and used it. And it's a divine enablement. I didn't deserve it. I didn't earn it. God gave it to me. And there's other gifts like the leadership gift. I didn't know I had uh, the systems gift. I didn't know I had. And I know it sounds like very self-serving, but it's not. I'm giving the glory to God. God has done these things in my life. Now, am I the goat, the you know greatest of all times? No. Does God want me to be the goat? No, because he is the greatest of all time, not me. But he gives me divine enablement. And, and the moment I was saved... God gave these things to me, lying dormant in my heart until needed, and then living them out as I'm obeying him to serve him by serving others. And I'm just amazed by that, that God is so faithful. Now, I've done some things that I didn't have a divine enablement about, and I didn't enjoy doing them, and I didn't do them very long because I wasn't any good at them. 
that's okay. I was willing to be obedient. So it's all about that heart of saying, Jesus, I'm yours. I want you to use my gifts as you've given them to me, these gifts you've given to me, I'm going to give them back to you. And you can take that assessment, and that's your spiritual gift. Um, my top three, as according to these, these uh, surveys I take, are leadership, preaching and teaching, and leading people to Jesus. That's my top three. And I've got some others in like in systems and strategy and structure. And, man, that may be more of an ability than a spiritual gift. But we'll talk about that in just a minute. The next letter in our acrostic is H, and that stands for your heart. What do you really love to do? What, do you, what makes your heart beat fast? Or what is a cause that you feel like you need to lean into? I know several years ago, Tara and I did a, a tour of Cambodia to look at upstream solutions in human trafficking. Why did we do that? Because our passion was to see people freed from the atrocities of the sex trade and being exploited in human trafficking and slavery. So we went. Our heart led us to do that, and then we developed a ministry as a result of that. And we were able to implement several of those things through our church in Canada because we had that heart, that passion. What do we really love to do? Now, your heart or your passion may not be as spiritual as as some people think, like I'm not into human trafficking or orphan care or feeding the you know, the hungry or whatever. It could be simply I'm passionate about cutting grass. I'm passionate about agriculture. I'm passionate about you know watching and educating kids. I'm passionate about this. So it could be whatever you put, God's put in your heart. I'm passionate about shopping and using that gift to help find the best deals and, the, and to make things great for those who are doing ministry. So there's all kinds of things God puts on your heart, and it takes a bit of self-examination. And I'll refer back to the worksheet we have. It's going to help you really kind of hone in on those things. What, are really, what am I really willing to fight for? What I really care about? What is really the passion of my life? What is my heart? Our next acrostic is A, and that's your abilities. Did you know the average person has 10,000 abilities? That's amazing. That's things that are not necessarily divinely enabled, even though they could be, because all of these things work together for your shape. What are your abilities? Maybe your abilities to organize. Maybe your abilities to do math. Maybe your abilities to woo people and win them over. Maybe it's your abilities to uh, be quiet and listen. I don't know what those abilities are. There are over 10,000 of them. Maybe it's your carpentry ability or or whatever, your painting ability, your artistic ability, your music, your musical abilities, whatever they are, God wants to use them for his glory. And you need to realize that, okay, God's given me these abilities. Now I need to surrender them along with my spiritual gift in my heart to my abilities to live out these purposes, to love others by serving others, by serving God. And that's using your shape. The P is your personality. And there are four basic personality types, lions, beavers, otters, and golden retrievers. Now, we could use a lot of different kind of uh, word pictures for those. You know, sanguine, melancholic, phlegmatic. Uh, uh, we could use those kind of words, but let's don't. Let's keep it simple. Lions are people that are like to be in charge. They're forward thinking. They like to run things. They like to get things done. Uh, they're leaders, and that's what a lion is. And some of you are that. You're that. I'm, I'm, I'm a lion. That's what I want to do. Some of you are beavers. You like structure and systems, and you read the directions, and you want things done in a specific way. Uh, we had one of our workers today took that personality test, and she came out as a beaver, and boy, really high beaver. And that means she wants to get things done. I'm a lion. I like to be in charge. I'm not really a beaver, but I'm, I have learned beaver tendencies because of necessities. And then the next one is the otter. You like to have fun. You know everybody, you just don't know their names. You like to tell jokes and like to be around people. You're the life of the party. And, and that's another one of my personalities. That's kind of who I am. I'm an otter. I'm a lion and an otter. I'm not a lion otter. I'm a lion and an otter. So to go along with this beaver thing. And then finally, there's golden retrievers. That's people who are to care, who are sympathetic, who are who, are, who care about people. And, and those God uses those personalities, the lions and the beavers and the otters and the golden retrievers. But here's the deal. Jesus was all for in perfect balance. So in looking at my shape, I need to look at my personalities and say, what do I need to align? If I don't have much compassion, I need to raise that level by serving people who are in need. Or I don't have much systems. Maybe I need to be more structured in what I do and 
and hone some of those beaver skills. Or maybe I need to step up and lead, leading myself before I lead anything else. Or maybe I need a little bit, be more, uh, not sit in the corner, be a little more gregarious and outgoing and friendly because Jesus was all for in perfect balance. So, but that's the P, the personality. And then finally, in our crossing, there's the E, and that's experiences. You know, you can't teach experience. You have to go through it. And God is, he doesn't waste anything. He doesn't waste a hurt. He doesn't waste an experience. So think about this. What are my educational experiences? What have I learned in school, in, in my advanced degrees, or in high school? Or what, is, what have I learned in study? What's my educational experiences? What are my ministry experiences? What have I been involved with that's quote-unquote ministry? Maybe it's in another church or maybe with another group that I've had these. Maybe I've been on mission trips or maybe I've worked with students or children or maybe I've sung or preached or whatever. What are my, or maybe help the poor or whatever else I've done. What are my, my, my ministry experiences? What are, what are my family experiences? What dynamics in my family? And then finally, and there's probably more than this, what are my painful experiences? What are things have I have I endured or gone through that really has shaped me as a person? Maybe it's childhood trauma. You know, trauma can produce drama, or trauma can produce ministry. You can make the choice. Like your misery becomes your ministry, or your mess becomes your message. Maybe you've gone through recovery and you are passionate about helping other people in recovery, and you're using that now as a springboard. But hear me and hear me well. It's all five of those. Your spiritual gift, your heart, your ability, your personality, and your experience. And God uses all these things for his glory and you're uniquely shaped by him for you are his masterpiece as referring to Ephesians 2.10 again. You are his, literally the Greek word there is poem or song. You are his masterpiece. He's created for his glory in your shape. So take some time, go over the shape profile list and, and read those things, and then get involved. Don't sit on the bench. Maybe there's a program or ministry we have going that you can plug right into. Maybe we need to start something. Uh, today I had a conversation with a lady. She said, I want to start a prayer ministry. And I said, okay. And she's up and going, and, and she's going to use her shape because she loves to pray, it's important to her, and she has, loves people, and God is using her shape to start a ministry. Maybe there's some other ministries you need to start. And I want to give you a warning. If you come to me and you said, Pastor Scott, we need to do this, this, and this, I'm going to go, congratulations, you're now in charge. Because if God's put it in your heart and it's come out of your mouth, that means you're supposed to do it. So be careful what you announce in public because you may find yourself in a ministry that shapes your life for God's glory. Take some time, have a discussion, find your shape, and then serve God. Love God by serving others. I hope this helps.